Hello everyone, I'm going to be showing you how to beat the infinite cycle mission on Brutal Difficulty and I'm going to show you how to get all three of the base achievements and how to get all of the bonus solarite. Also, uh, plus 15 solarite you can get with this mission and there's three different solarite pickups that you have to find. So the first achievement is the infinite cycle, which is complete the infinite cycle mission in the Legacy of the Void campaign. And then our second achievement is going to be... Hero of the Storm, which is to deal 7,500 damage with Artanis' Lightning Dash ability on the Infinite Cycle mission. Not a problem at all, we're probably going to double that. And then the third achievement that we're going to get is Bane of Their Existence, which is to kill 20 units with spawn Banelings in the Infinite Cycle mission on normal difficulty. And that one's a cakewalk to get to. You won't have a problem, especially on Brutal Difficulty, getting any of these three achievements. It may take a little bit longer to get uh, the middle achievement, but it won't take too long. You are in and as you can see, it's brutal difficulty, and we're going to launch this mission, hop straight into things. I serve my so, Artanis and Kerrigan have quite a few different abilities. A couple of ones that you have to activate yourself. As you can see, I'm hovering over them right now. Feel free to pause on any of them if you want to read for yourself and look at their health and shields, what but uh, for example Artanis has two active abilities and two passive abilities, and Kerrigan has two active abilities and one passive ability. But before I go in more depth on those, I just want to uh, cover really quickly, uh, something I like to do at this beginning, because I've played this mission a couple times now, is I like to uh, spawn those banelings right away, and then uh, make sure Artanis can use his use his uh, lightning dash ability every single time that uh, that those guys spawn those uh, smaller units in. The lightning dash ability will kill will kill those uh, smaller units that the construct spawns right away. It's just like a one hit one kill. And on brutal difficulty, uh, we're going to be taking stuff on pretty much one at a time. We're not going to go go in and try to take everything on. Like for example these hybrids, you can activate that construct at the same time. Which I actually didn't know about that. I thought you had to take these on uh, one at a time, but uh, that's I, that was what I would advise: is just uh, take things on, take things slow. There is no uh, rush, except for once once you get to the end of the mission, there will be a bit of a rush. But yeah, take take your time when you're doing this. And then you're going to want to make sure to really watch out for those uh, red circles that spawn, and then. Uh, because those red circles can literally kill kill your characters if you're not paying attention. And then um, every single time one of those big red circles goes down, micro out of them, but uh, every single time one of those goes down, that's where he's going to spawn a bunch of those little, those tiny constructs. So you have to make sure to watch out for that. And then uh, you're going to want to really make sure to micro. You, you really have to... Uh, I mean, you automatically have both of these guys on your hotkeys. Uh, Artanis is your one hotkey, and Kerrigan is your two hotkey. But you really have to pay attention to what you're doing when you're playing on Brutal Difficulty. If you don't micro, you're not going to be able to beat this on Brutal Difficulty. Brutal Difficulty, it's just that simple. So, what I like to do is when I'm fighting these guys, when I, uh, Artanis has this Astral Wind ability, which heals Artanis and all nearby friendly units for 300 life and 200 shields, and then it has a cooldown of 15 seconds. So, what I do is I do uh, an attack with the Lightning Dash with Artanis's ability every now and then, or every five seconds I try to use that uh, Lightning Dash ability, and then when I start getting low on health or Kerrigan starts getting low on health, I micro both of my characters uh, back back towards each other so that the astral wind ability can affect both of them and then I use that ability to heal both Kerrigan and Artanis at the same time. And then uh, expanding further on Artanis' lightning dash ability that uh, Artanis charges forward unleashing a blast of energy that deals 100 damage to nearby enemies and stuns them for 2 seconds and then it has a cooldown of 5 seconds. So basically you have 3 seconds in there where the enemy is going to be able to attack you. At least enemies that are uh, stunned by your uh, lightning dash ability. So if you're using that ability every five seconds, it's just going to be completely epic. Because it's just so good. I mean, five second cooldown, that's huge. 
So you have to really, really make sure to focus on Artanis, and then um, don't let him get surrounded like that, because Artanis, like I said, it, he can only use that uh, lightning dash ability every five seconds, so if you're not paying attention, he will get surrounded and will get killed if he doesn't have the Resurgence passive ability allowed. So this is probably one of the toughest, one of the toughest spots in this mission right here, and you have to really focus on killing those medevacs. I didn't do that, but as I, I've already beat this, uh, beat the mastery achievement for this. So what I'm showing you guys is uh, microing around in a circle. But on when I play through on the mastery achievement, I do this much better. You have to take out those medevacs as they come instantly. That way, you won't have to worry about all these extra units. And then when those colossus spawn, you take out those colossus before the actual hybrids come in. And then you don't have this huge army chasing you around and then almost killing you every single time. But as you can see, if if uh, at worst worst case scenario is what you just saw, all you have to do is run around in a circle and then keep waiting for that that uh, astral wind ability to cool down, and then you should be fine. And then right, like right here, here's another another spot where. You want to use Kerrigan's uh, kinetic blast ability on those warp prisms before they before they warp in any of these uh, Protoss units, the Zealots, the uh, Immortals, and the uh, Stalkers. Or those might be Annihilators. No, I think they're Immortals. But yeah, uh, you can actually take out all four of those warp prisms before they warp any of the units in. And I didn't I didn't know that before when I was recording this, but I do now, and it. It'll really just save you, save you time, and it'll also just make it so much easier when you're facing these these uh, hybrid. But once again, worst case scenario, if you have all the units coming at you, you have this really long path that you just walk down. You just keep walking, uh, attack, and then move back, attack, and then move back every time, and then eventually you should have all the units killed. And when you're when you're attacking and then moving back, that's that's a really good time to use. Uh, Artanis' lightning dash ability, and then also to use Kerrigan's uh, spawn Banelins ability. And uh, yeah, it, it'll just help you out a lot here. And it's up to you, but honestly, I, I think it's better to focus down the Taldarim before you actually kill those constructs, because it seems like those, if you let, a, if you let the Taldarim attack those constructs for a little while, the constructs are going to end up dying first and the constructs are going to be pretty easy to kill but there's going to be more more tall to ream at this little stage right here anyways it doesn't matter too much because this this little step was not that hard to beat and it was probably one of the easier easier areas for enemies that is and right when you walk into this next area there's going to be a bunch of specters that spawn in so here's once again a really good spot to use that lightning dash ability and these medevacs that come in I believe you can kinetic blast them, but every single time I've tried to kinetic blast them before they drop the units, it doesn't work. I kinetic blast the medevac, but the unit still drops down. So I I just haven't had any luck with with stopping those medevacs, unfortunately. So I I don't know if I'd even uh, use your kinetic blast on trying to get those down. Just use, save that kinetic blast for the Thor that gets dropped down there. And then once again, every time you walk in this room here, there's going to be hybrids. Uh, all. No matter how many times you replay this mission, the same units are going to spawn at each spot. So you can just, if you don't beat the mission the first time, just keep replaying and get to know, get to know your area, and then know what's coming at you. So for example, this next area, there's going to be a bunch of reapers that are going to hop out of uh, the higher ground, and then there's going to be a bunch of specters in the front, and then Goliaths, and I think maybe even a Thor to come at me. So right here there's Spectres in the front, there's Goliaths, and yep, there's the Thor. And then there's a ton of Reapers that hop in. And like I said, you, you, you'll you get to know this mission really well if you play it as many times as I did. <laughs> Mostly for the mastery achievement. But well, what, I, what I like to do, as you saw, is I use my Lightning Dash on those uh, initial Reapers and Spectres that come at you. And that should one hit all of those uh, lighter units, and then you can spawn Kerrigan's banelings, uh, since you can spawn six of them in, and uh, those banelings should be able to clean up almost all of the rest of the units. And uh, just to expand on that a little bit more, uh, Kerrigan's spawn banelings ability, uh, 
they all have timed life, so you have to use them before they run out, but the timed life is actually quite quite a bit of time. I mean, you don't really have to worry about losing them. And then it has a cooldown of 30 seconds before you can use that ability again. And it costs 50 energy. So Kerrigan does have a limited amount of energy. It does regenerate fast, but she only has 110 energy. So if you use that, you're going to have a little bit over half of your energy left after you use that ability. I didn't really have problems running out of energy with Kerrigan, so it's not, it's not really a big deal. But I would use that ability as much as you can. Just make sure to pay attention to that. And then here, you're going to get more Warp Prisms. Make sure to Kinetic Blast uh, the first or the second one, whatever you can. But make sure to kill these before they actually spawn in those units, because they will spawn in a lot of Taldorian units. And then try to take out as many of these uh, Medivacs as soon as you can. You can actually Kinetic Blast these Medivacs before they drop anything. And <clears throat> it would definitely help you for time's sake. For example, when you go for the Mastery Achievement, the mastery achievements, you have to take out everything everything that you can as fast as you can. <laughs> it, it's just going to speed up the process kinetic blasting those Metavacs. Kinetic blast the Metavacs, they don't drop any units. It saves you time. Makes life easier. So this is where the time starts dropping. You only have four minutes to get to the very end of this uh, map. And as you can see, we've gotten uh, two of the bonus solar rates. We've collected the Exile Naga devices. So uh, we need one more. And the two devices that we've collected so far, those have been pretty easy to find. It's just the last one. If you're not paying attention, it might be a little bit more difficult to actually figure out where it is. But it's not all that bad to find it. And it, and it will be very close to the our main objective that we're getting to. So... I will make sure to point that out once we get there. And then you can take out all of these units as well, but uh, from doing the mastery achievement, you guys can literally just get by all of these all of these units. And if you keep running, these uh, solar beams or purifier beams that are uh, moving around the map, all of the units will follow you and they'll run straight into those purifier beams if you micro correctly. So you don't even have to you don't even have to waste your time trying to kill these units. But either way, I'm still going to end up with more than enough time to uh, make it to the main objective and then also get the Exil Naga device to get the last plus five solarite. <clears throat> and with how many times that uh, how many times Lightning Dash has been used, we've definitely done enough damage to get that achievement for 7,500 damage and. We've definitely killed enough units with Bane Lanes to get the 20, kill 20 units with Bane Lanes achievement, so we don't have to worry about that. And then here's another prime example. If you hold these units right here, that Purifier Beam will come in and burn all these units. I believe you can even get these units right here too if you micro correctly. Like, yeah, there, they just burned to death. And then uh, right here, this is where we're going to be getting our next Exel Naga device. Or the final one, that is. You just kill these units really quick, and then you run Artanis down, just because he has the lightning dash ability, so it's a little bit quicker. And then there it is. There's the last Exil Naga device. It's kind of buried in the bottom right corner of the map. And then all you have left is this final step. And this final step will be a little bit difficult, and you're going to have to make sure to micro, really practice your micro on this. If you weren't trying to go and trying to beat this mission in one go, I would save right now. Save right now before you actually play through the rest of this little step here because I found this this part to be quite annoying I died quite a few times after I got to this part like right here those you have the Colossus and then the Thor and then all the ranged hybrids hitting you at the same time it can kill our Tannis pretty quickly it can kill a Kerrigan quickly too but I didn't really have Kerrigan in the back because she has that ranged attack so that's why our Tannis generally ends up dying but my advice to you is once again run circles and then whatever unit has less life, make sure to put that unit furthest away from the enemies. So for example, right there, Artanis had the least amount of life. So I made sure to put Kerrigan in front of Artanis, or closer to the enemy units, and then they started focusing on Kerrigan, and then I was able to use the, use the Astral Wind ability from Artanis to heal, heal both of my units. And what I really should have done is focus down those Thor and Colossus sooner. But we will we will end up getting them. There we go. We ended up lightning dashing the, 
the final Thor, and then Kerrigan was able to use a ranged attack to finish off that Colossus. And then now it's just a matter of spawning in those Bane lanes, use Quick Dash ability, and then use Kerrigan's Kinetic Blast ability. And something else I just wanted to point out, uh, it, it'd be really smart to make good use of Artanis' Resurgence ability, and that uh, grants Artanis invulnerability for 3 seconds upon taking lethal damage. So it prevents him from dying and replenishes all of his shields in life. So it's basically, I mean, if you, if you need to use, or not need to use it, but you can make really good use of this because not only does it replenish all of the shields in the life, it also releases a, a big blast that deals 100 damage to all the surrounding enemies, and it knocks back all the enemies around him. So if he's surrounded and this goes off, he's not going to be surrounded anymore. You can get him out of there. And then uh, the only downside is it can't occur more than 60 seconds. So if you use it right, you can actually uh, incorporate it into the amount of damage that you do, and you can more quickly take out enemy units because you're depending on that resurgence ability you know it's going that this passive ability is going to go off so you can guarantee that uh artanis isn't going to die and you can keep him in the battle longer and have kerrigan do more ranged attack damage just, just because you know he's not going to die once this resurgence ability goes off but yeah like i said it's only every 60 seconds so you have to be careful about that and then I just want to point out really quickly the achievements. Uh, I already had the other two uh, normal difficulty achievements, but I will, in our mission recap stats, I will show you what we have gotten. So as you can see, we got all the main objective reward, which was 20 solarites. We got plus 15 uh, bonus objective solarites. And then we were able to kill uh, 61 units with Bane Lanes, which will definitely cover the Bane of their existence, which is kill 20 units with spawn Bane Lanes in the Infinite Cycle Mission and Normal Difficulty. So we covered that one. And then, as you can see, damage dealt with Lightning Dash, we did 15,833 damage, which doubles the amount of damage needed for the Hero of the Storm achievement, which is deal 7,500 damage with Artanis' dash ability on the Infinite Cycle Mission. And then that'll cover all of them. And then, yep, as you can see, there's the Infinite Cycle Achievement, which is just to beat the Infinite Cycle, uh, Infinite Cycle Mission. So, there you have it, guys. I hope this was very helpful. Uh, one more thing I wanted to point out is that um, the health for both of your units. Uh, Kerrigan has 800 life, and she doesn't have any shields, but she has 800 life. And Artanis has uh, only 200 life, but 500 shields. So if you, and they both have the same amount of armor, so the shields give you a, num a number count of 3 armor, and then the armor for Artanis gives you an armor count of 3. And then Kerrigan's armor, her chitin, chitin armor, or whatever it's called, um, her Zerg armor has an armor rating of 3 as well. So if you look at it, Kerrigan can actually take more hits, 100 more hit points than Artanis can. And it, that's just something to really pay attention to. It, I always was putting Artanis in the front. And sometimes it's good when he has the Resurgence ability available because really then he has uh, he has more like 1,400 hit points because it's doubled because he regenerates everything. But um, our, if he doesn't have that ability, I would actually put Kerrigan in front. Even though she has the ranged attack, I'd put her in front because she's more tanky than Artanis is. That's just a suggestion. Up to you guys to do whatever you want to do. And... Um, uh, feel free, feel free, but thanks for watching guys, I hope this really helped you get those achievements, if you haven't already got them, and please let me know if you found out a better way of microwing your units, or a better way of just doing this mission. In my Master Achievement video, I'm definitely going to show you a much more effective way of doing this mission, so uh, make sure to stop in on that video, I'll be posting that right after this Brutal Difficulty video, and that one's way shorter too, it's only about like seven minutes of gameplay because I did it really quick. So thank you for watching guys. Have a good one.